adenoiditis, adenoid hypertrophy. Definition Chronic inflammation and enlargement of the adenoids refer to a condition where the adenoids become swollen, leading to obstruction of the nasopharyngeal airway. This obstruction can result in recurrent infections of the nasal sinuses and middle ear, otitis media, as well as potential facial maldevelopment, known as adenoid facies. Etiology The etiology of adenoid enlargement can be attributed to various factors. Physiological growth during childhood is a common occurrence during their immunologically active phase. Physiological enlargement of adenoids typically peaks between the ages of 2 and 4. Additionally, some children may have a predisposition to generalized lymphoid hyperplasia in which the adenoids are also involved. Chronic adenoid infection and hyperplasia can result from recurrent episodes of rhinitis, sinusitis, or chronic tonsillitis. Adenoid hypertrophy is more prevalent in individuals from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Allergic conditions affecting the upper respiratory tract can also contribute to adenoid enlargement. Environmental factors such as crowded living conditions and environmental pollution may play a role. Hyperplasia of adenoids has been associated with infection by Haemophilus influenza, among other organisms. Normal flora in the adenoids include various bacteria, such as lactobacilli, anaerobic streptococci, actinomycosis, fusobacterium species, and nocardia species. Pathogenic bacteria commonly found in adenoiditis include Haemophilus influenza, Group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus, Staphylococcus aureus, Morexella cardiolis, and Streptococcus pneumonia. Tuberculosis rarely affects the adenoids. Adenoid hypertrophy in adults, while not common, should raise concerns about the possibility of lymphoma. Pathology and immunology. In addition to normal growth, the size of the adenoids has been observed to correlate with the aerobic bacterial load and the quantity of B and T cells present. Disease conditions can alter the distribution of dendritic cells, which are responsible for antigen presentation. During such instances, there is a decrease in the number of dendritic cells in the surface epithelium and an increase in the crypts and extrafollicular regions. Clinical Features Symptoms Nasal Symptoms The most common symptom is nasal obstruction, leading to mouth breathing. This obstruction can also interfere with the child's ability to feed or suckle, as breathing and feeding cannot occur simultaneously. Consequently, children with enlarged adenoids may experience failure to thrive. Nasal discharge is frequently observed and can be attributed to both coanal obstruction, which hinders the normal drainage of nasal secretions into the nasal pharynx, and associated chronic rhinitis. This often results in a wet, bubbly nose. Adenoid enlargement is commonly associated with chronic maxillary sinusitis. This is caused by the persistence of nasal discharge and infection. Conversely, primary maxillary sinusitis can lead to infected and enlarged adenoids. Epistaxis may occur when the adenoids are acutely inflamed, particularly during nose blowing. Voice changes are notable, characterized by a toneless quality and a loss of nasal resonance due to nasal obstruction. Oral Symptoms Tubal Obstruction Enlarged adenoids can block the eustachian tube, resulting in a retracted tympanic membrane and conductive hearing loss. Recurrent Acute Otitis Media Infection can spread through the eustachian tube, leading to recurrent episodes of acute otitis media. Chronic Suppurative Otitis Media the presence of infective adenoids may hinder the resolution of chronic suppurative otitis media. Otitis media with effusion. Adenoids play a significant role in the development of otitis media with effusion in children. The fluctuating size of the adenoids can cause intermittent obstruction of the eustachian tube, resulting in fluctuating hearing loss. Impedance audiometry is useful for diagnosing this condition. Throat symptoms. It's caused by recurrent pharyngitis, tonsillitis, mouth breathing. Frequent episodes of sore throat, 
difficulty swallowing, dysphagia, voice changes, reduced appetite, and potential malnutrition. General symptoms, cognitive impairment or mental dullness, bedwetting during the night, nocturnal anoresis, night terrors, episodes of intense fear or distress during sleep. Signs, nasal. Typically, nasal discharge is observed in the floor of the nasal cavity and can extend to the middle meatus when sinusitis is present. The cold spatula test demonstrates reduced fogging on both sides. Mucosal congestion and swelling may be apparent. In older children, a post-nasal mirror examination may reveal enlarged adenoids. Oral. The eardrum may appear retracted or bulging, depending on the severity of the condition. The presence of fluid level within the middle ear may be observed. It's not uncommon to observe features of acute otitis media or chronic otitis media. Tuning fork tests indicate conductive hearing loss. Throat. Pharyngeal mucosal congestion. Granular appearance of the posterior pharyngeal wall. Presence of postnasal drip. Neck. Cervical lymphadenopathy is frequently observed, affecting the upper deep cervical and posterior triangle lymph nodes. Facial features. Adenoid facies. Chronic enlargement of the adenoids resulting in persistent nasal obstruction can lead to various facial characteristics and abnormalities, commonly known as adenoid facies. These features may include narrowed or pinched nose, habitual mouth breathing, saliva dribbling, flattened nasal arch, underdeveloped cheekbones, malar hypoplasia, elongated face, dull or vacant facial expression, reduced nasal labial fold, short upper lip that protrudes, crowding of teeth, particularly in the upper jaw, high arched palate, hearing loss, which can contribute to inattentiveness in children, general features, stunted growth or growth retardation, frequent episodes of lower respiratory tract infections, recurrent diarrhea, poor nutritional status, pigeon-shaped chest, barrel chest, bulging or protuberant abdomen, Anoresis, bedwetting, possibly present or absent. Investigations Diagnostic nasal endoscopy. This procedure is highly valuable for assessing the extent of adenoid hypertrophy and evaluating the impact on the nasal pharyngeal airway, particularly in relation to the coena, openings of the nasal cavity, and the eustachian tube orifice. X ray of the nasopharynx. A lateral view of the head and neck can provide visualization of soft tissues and aid in diagnosing adenoid hypertrophy. Sleep studies. If sleep apnea is suspected, conducting sleep studies can be beneficial in evaluating sleep-related breathing disorders. Treatment. For mild or infrequent symptoms, medical management is typically recommended, which may include controlling recurrent respiratory and oral infections, Administration of antihistamines and decongestants. Consideration of steroid nasal sprays, such as mometasone, as a potential treatment option. Improving nutritional status through appropriate dietary measures. Incorporating breathing exercises to enhance nasal airflow and respiratory function. For moderate to severe or persistent symptoms, the following interventions may be considered. Adenoidectomy. Surgical removal of the adenoids, known as adenoidectomy, is often recommended in cases of significant adenoid hypertrophy and related symptoms. Myringotomy and grommet insertion. In situations where otitis media with diffusion, fluid buildup in the middle ear, is present, additional procedures such as myringotomy, incision in the eardrum, and grommet insertion, Placement of small tubes in the eardrums may be necessary to facilitate drainage and alleviate associated symptoms. Adenoidectomy Indications for adenoidectomy Adenoid facies, atrophy Nasal obstruction and mouth breathing caused by enlarged adenoids Presence of aseptic focus, such as otitis media or chronic rhinosinusitis associated with the adenoids Snoring related to adenoid hypertrophy. 
sleep apnea syndrome, indicating the need for adenoidectomy. Contraindications for adenoidectomy. Age younger than three years. Presence of bleeding disorders. Acute infection in the adenoid area. Cervical spine pathology, such as an unstable spine, or conditions like mucopolysaccharidosis that may pose risk during surgery. Epidemic of poliomyelitis when adenoidectomy should be avoided. Adenoidectomy techniques. There are two primary types of adenoidectomy techniques, conventional technique and endoscopic technique. In conventional technique, Curatage is a conventional method used for adenoidectomy. It involves the removal of adenoid tissue using a curate instrument. An endoscopic technique. The endoscopic approach can be performed either transnasally through the nose or transorally through the mouth. This technique utilizes an endoscope to visualize and remove the adenoid tissue. Steps of adenoidectomy by curatage technique. Placement of oral tracheal intubation. Positioning. Supine position with neck extension and extension of the lantoaxial joint. Application of the boiled Davis mouth gag while excluding the use of a bipod stand. Palpation of the nasopharynx to assess the size of the adenoids in relation to the coena, openings of the nasal cavity, and the nasal septum. Flexion of the neck to prevent cervical lordosis and minimize the risk of injury to the anterior spinal ligament during the curatage procedure. Utilization of St. Clair Thompson's adenoid curate with or without a cage. Insertion of the curate behind the soft palate until the posterior end of the nasal septum is palpated. Progressive insertion of the curate to trap the adenoids inside employing a sweeping motion with the curate, moving downwards and forwards, repeating the curatage procedure until the coena can be palpated as being clear in the patient. Endoscopic adenoidectomy. Endoscopic adenoidectomy is a relatively recent advancement in the surgical management of adenoid hypertrophy. It was initially described by Nayak et al. in 1998 when performing the procedure on a patient with Shy syndrome MPS-1S, a condition that involves atlantoaxial joint instability. Traditional adenoidectomy is contraindicated in such cases due to the need for specific patient positioning. A comparative study between conventional and endoscopic techniques revealed the benefits of the endoscopic approach, including reduced blood loss and improved postoperative airway function. Direct visualization during endoscopic adenoidectomy allows for precise clearance of the airway while minimizing the risk of injury to the eustachian tube orifice. Nyack et al., 2005. Complications of adenoidectomy. Adenoidectomy, like any surgical procedure, carries the risk of potential complications, which may include hemorrhage. There can be two types of bleeding complications primary bleeding that occurs during or immediately after the surgery, and reactionary bleeding that happens within 24 hours post-surgery. Secondary hemorrhage is very rare. Aspiration. The risk of accidental inhalation of fluids or tissue fragments during the procedure. Eustachian tube orifice injury. Injuries to the eustachian tube orifice may result in complications such as otitis media with effusion or suppurative otitis media. Soft palate and posterior pharyngeal wall injury. There is a possibility of injury to these structures during the surgical procedure. Injury to the anterior longitudinal ligament. In rare cases, damage to the anterior longitudinal ligament may occur, leading to subluxation of the atlanto-occipital joint which could potentially result in quadriplegia. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.